All right, today is Saturday, September 10th. Just gonna do a little update here on the aquaponics system. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is mostly water chemistry. Um, my caretaker had told me last week that uh, the nitrate levels were really high. Uh, he just said they were red. Sorry about that, I just put my finger on the lens. Um, this is a nitrate reading right here, and you can see the chart right there, and that's between the very last and the uh, second to last shades of red there, between 80 and 160 parts per million. This is what it was reading last week, and as a result, um, we stopped feeding the fish for an entire week now. They have not been fed, which is why I was very surprised today to come back and test the nitrates and find that they're still almost off the charts. Um, I was so surprised by it that I even took out, this is my test kit, I even took out a new test kit, which is this one. Uh, I ripped out a fancy, uh, shiny new test kit to make sure that it didn't have anything to do with my, my test kit. And sure enough, the nitrate levels are still really, really up there. Um, so I kind of got paranoid. I've been testing everything all day. And here you can see the pH is fine. That looks like it's between 6.6 .6 and 6.8. Ammonia levels are fine. Those are no higher than 0.50 parts per million. Uh, nitrite is fine. That I've hardly ever measured nitrite because if you have nitrates, you obviously have uh, the bacteria that produce nitrites. So that's not one that I really measure very often. But the nitrates, there they are. They're still through the roof. So, uh, and that's again after not feeding the fish for an entire week and having plants in the system growing, they should be absorbing those nitrates. So I'm not sure what's what's going on. One possibility is that the way I handle my my fish uh, particles that collect in this uh, very small swirl filter is that when this is emptied, when the when the solids are taken out, I then take I take them and I have them dumped in the, in this grow bed. Um, it doesn't really matter if they went into this one or any of the other ones. Uh, once they're in the system, they're in the system. So I, I don't know if due to the accumulation of that fish waste, days and weeks after weeks, if those, uh, if that fish waste is just simply in this bed uh, accumulated so much and it just it's releasing over time or it gets released over time and as the uh, as the red composting worms that are in here and today we took out some plants and found a lot of worms um, if that if the red worms that are in there uh, slowly breaking that down are releasing more into the system than than what one would expect. I don't know. But um, in any case, what I do know is that I'm going to continue to starve the fish until the nitrate levels come down. I'd like to see them uh, get below 40 parts per million, get them into the 20 and 10 part per million range, uh, because I am worried about the health of the fish otherwise. Uh, the plants, in the meantime, they look okay. I, I'm not sure if they've not grown as much in the last week or not. If the nitrate levels are as high as they are, then not feeding the fish shouldn't affect the rate of growth of the plants. They should be growing as happily as could be. And again, since I'm not uh, being all that scientific about this, I haven't measured these. I don't know how they compare to the other batches of lettuce that I have grown. Um, there are some inconsistencies. I mean, just look between these two plants and then these two. Although this one looks like it, it was affected by something, some sort of infection there. The rest of them look reasonably consistent, I suppose. 
and the ones from this row that way, they've been in the system for two weeks now. And from here that way, these have only been in the system, I guess it's been uh, planted these last Sunday, so we're talking six days. And there's some inconsistencies here too, uh, just look at this one, look at that one, compare it to this one. They're just they're right next to each other. There's no reason why they should be that different. That's just the way it goes. These are looking a little on the pale side, uh, so we added more uh, chelated iron today. And then uh, this bed, although there are inconsistencies in this bed, I can't say anymore that this bed in general that the lettuce in that bed in general is growing more slowly than the lettuce in the other beds, which is, which was the case before when this one had one uh, air hose, uh, which is ha which, compared to the other ones that had two. This one now has two air hoses, and it looks like these are, I would even say these might be growing more quickly than, uh, than the, the ones in the other beds. In the gravel beds, um, we have the tomato plants from last week that had been planted. It looks like those all took. And today I planted um, some baby cucumbers. When I say baby, I mean these will produce the miniature baby cucumbers, not the plants are baby, which they are, but that's not what I meant. This plant, these uh, tomatoes are coming up fine. These other, uh, this plant here is, uh, this is some sort of uh, flower, I don't even forget what it's called. I just wanted to try how they'd grow in the, uh, in aquaponics. They seem to be doing very well. Over here we have, these are from last week, the lettuce, uh, I'm sorry, the tomato plants that did take. And this one in particular, this one really, uh, I know that one grew at least two inches because I did measure that one and uh, this is another miniature cucumber plant that went in today. Here's a basil plant that's been in here oh I don't know a couple of several weeks. This one's got a little bit of chlorosis it's, of, of uh, intravenal um, iron deficiency but these leaves are, are huge. Um, I don't think I've, I've seen basil leaves this big at least not in any of the on any of the plants that I've grown in this or any other system. And there's another one in this bed as well that's pretty gigantic. Just to measure these. That's that leaf alone is is about six inches long. Those are about the same. In the wicking beds, we have the uh, this, this jalapeno plant. It's really putting out some jalapenos now. I already picked some off today, nice and red. Those look good. And down below are some other chili plants that are coming up. These are chili plants uh, from seed that came from Serbia. So I'm looking forward to these. This is this is the one that's growing the most right here. Uh, it's really quite remarkable how how much more that one's grown compared to the other ones. They are different kinds of chili plants, but but still, they were all planted at the same time from seed. In this bed, I took all the strawberry plants out today. This bed, this uh, bathtub bed, was originally meant to be for herbs. Um, because it's higher off the ground, I, I didn't, I never intended it to be for anything that would grow very tall. And so I finally decided to start moving the herbs from these beds over into, into this one. And if you remember last week we moved the aloe plant over. And then today I moved this tarragon that was in one of these, these other beds over here. This, um, rosemary looks like it's taking, I'm not sure kind of hard to tell with rosemary sometimes because sometimes it's actually dead and it just hasn't turned brown yet so I'm hoping that that one's stuck um, 
But anyway, when we took these strawberry plants out of here today, we couldn't help but noticing worms in the roots. Just, they, they like to make a home in the roots. And uh, we took a picture of one of them that was a good uh, eight inches long, six or eight inches long, um, which is much bigger than what they were when I put them in there. And I hope they're not just growing, I hope they're, they're reproducing as well. But anyway, in the meantime, the main, my main concern right now is the water chemistry. And we're just, we're going to continue to not feed the fish until those numbers come down significantly. Um, and I'm, I'm suspecting that it's going to be, when it does, when they do come down, they're going to come down rather abruptly. Because I think that there's simply material in the beds that's being broken down by the worms and by the bacteria and everything else that's going on in the beds. And uh, since we're no longer adding food for the fish, then eventually that, uh, that process uh, is going to deplete the available food sources that there are and those nitrate levels have to fall off. So as soon as they do, then we'll start feeding the fish again, slowly at first, um, just to make sure we get the right amount of feed going in so that those nitrate levels don't go through the roof again. So anyway, that's about it. We should have some lettuce in another week or two at the most. And until next time. Okay, I decided to do uh, another experiment today. And uh, one of the things I was wondering about was whether or not the worm tea that I added, I've only added it one time, that was last week. I added 250 mils to the entire system, which is over 5,500 liters. Um, but I was wondering if that worm tea had any nitrates in it. So today, I took some of my worm tea, uh, I diluted it 1 to 10, that's what's in that, uh, in that container over there. I diluted that 1 to 10, and then I tested it for nitrates, and it's the, uh, the middle of the, three, of the three tubes there. And um, on the left is regular tap water, the middle is the worm tea diluted 1 to 10, and on the right is my fish tank, my, well, not just the fish tank, but the entire, the system water. So as you can see, the worm it's not the worm tea. The worm tea has no detectable nitrates in it. So uh, the mystery continues as to where these nitrates are coming from. And again, I suspect it's just the accumulated fish waste that's in the bottom of these gravel grow beds that hopefully my worms are feasting on. And uh, those are just being released into the water. So what I'm left with is, uh, what I'm left with are the water chemistry numbers. The nitrates are fine. If the nitrate, well, the nitrates are not fine. The nitrates are over uh, the levels of where they should be. But what that means is that my plants should be uh, able to grow since there are plenty of nitrates in the system. So I'm not going to feed the fish. I am not going to feed them until the nitrate levels start to come down. And unless there's something really screwy going on, my plants should be able to continue growing like normal because the nitrates are there for them to grow on. If they don't, then I'll go back to square one. And hopefully my fish can hold out without eating for a while. I'm pretty sure they can. They should They should go over a month without eating, without any problems, supposedly. Although I've never tried that. So, anyway, that's it. Just wanted to show these uh, water chemistry tests. Worm tea has zero nitrates. Okay, I also decided to test the ammonia and nitrites in the, in the worm tea. And nitrites were negative. There, there weren't any that I could detect. Uh, but here we have ammonia, and, oop, and what we have here are uh, the first tube on the left is a 1 to 10 dilution of the worm tea, and the next tube is a 1 to 10 dilution of the 1 to 10 dilution, so that's a 1 to 100 dilution. And as you can see, the, the first tube is somewhere between 4 and 8 parts per million. Maybe it's over 8, it's hard to tell. That's why I did the next dilution of 1 to 10. That one looks like it's 
somewhere between 0.5 and 1, so you multiply that by 100, you're somewhere between 5, uh, between 50 and 100 parts per million. I'm sorry, 5 to 10, excuse me, 5 to 10 parts per million. Um, so those levels are quite high, but I don't think that's enough to explain the level of nitrates that I have in the system. Because if you, if you do the math, um, I added 250 mils of the worm tea last week, and I had 250 mils added during the week. So that's a total of half a liter added to the system. The system, uh, I just checked my figures, is about 4,200 liters. Let's just say it's 4,000 liters to make it easy. That ratio of half a liter into 4,000 uh, gives you 0 0.000125 of a dilution factor. And if you multiply that by these concentrations of ammonia, you, you, you get way less than the amount of nitrate that I'm seeing, that I'm, that I'm reading. I mean, I'm getting levels of nitrate over here, 160 parts per million. And after you dilute, if you assume that all this ammonia that got added to the system gets turned into nitrate on a one-to-one -one basis, um, even if, if that were true, you still would not expect to see levels um, on this end of the scale. You'd expect to see something way over here. So um, this helps explain a little bit of what I'm seeing, but it's, it doesn't explain all of it. Um, it is interesting to see how much ammonia is in worm tea. That's uh, actually good to know. Um, I would suspect that you could probably run an aquaponics system with uh, probably just worms if you set it up right. And I, I know there are people that are trying to do that. So, and I might just actually try setting up another system just using some uh, composting worms. But anyway, I just wanted to show uh, this final test with the ammonia. Again, I did test for nitrite, and I didn't find any. So, that's, uh, that's it.